Good afternoon, boys and girls, or oh, more likely, good evening. In fact, it's Friday at half past six, and I'm relatively liquored up on the five point XPA. I'll tell you what we're going to do today, very briefly. I'm at home alone, it's raining and miserable outside, and I've not got much else to do to cheer me up apart from drink beer and make a freaking curry. So that is the plan. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to explain to you what's going on. So here we have some ingredients for curry, but let's get straight to the point. First thing I'm going to do today is prepare a few poppadoms. Now, I like these ones. These are plain poppadoms. You can get them from uh, redrickshaw.com or um, Falcon Foods or your local Asian supermarket. Then you've also got these Natco ones, garlic, Punjabi, look at all the seeds in that, green chilli and jeera. There should also be a garlic one. Did I say garlic first? I think I did. So we're going to chuck a couple of these in to some hot oil which I've pre-prepared and then you're going to see how these actually kind of expand. Over here we've got some rice that's soaking in cold water. Here we've got some base gravy. Now this is a recipe that's available on YouTube. I'm not going to copy it. You just go to the channel and search it. Misty Ricardo, M-I-S-T-Y-R-I-C-C-A-R-D-O or R-I-C-K-A-R-D-O. Misty Ricardo base gravy. And he'll also be able to give you a recipe for your own mix powder and then we've got some other spices that are going to go into tonight's curry and a little bit of um, tomato puree a scotch bonnet pepper some garlic and ginger and a touch of pre-cooked chicken so it's really easy to prepare these poppadoms we want to get some oil up to a fair old dinkum temperature and I usually like to get up to about 180 degrees C so we'll just give this a minute and it ain't going to be far off and all we're going to do is take our poppadon submerge it in the oil and within seconds you'll see that it's going to expand and take the shape of indeed a poppadon and then usually I'll just scoop it up a little bit like that let the oil drip off <laughs> and pop it on some tissue paper to dry so the oil's a little bit cool at the minute but it'll get up to temp no problem so I'm making a curry tonight it's a chicken curry and it's going to be a little bit of a cross between, if you like, uh, Rogan Josh and a Jalfrezi. I'm not following any specific recipe. I'm just going off what I know because I cook this very often, all this style of curry. But if you want to really get into the depths of making homemade British Indian restaurant style cuisine, then I can't do any better then recommend to you Mr. Ricardo's Curry Compendium and Cookbook. They are absolutely a fantastic reference on how to prepare this type of food. And I've made everything from tandoori chicken to samosas and boring old kormas. No, let's be honest, a korma does have its place. So for the rice, we're just going to have a little splash of turmeric, a wee squirt of cooking oil, and then about the same, get one that's open sunshine, then about the same of lemon juice, 
So the lemon and the cooking oil stop the rice from sticking together and the turmeric gives it a lovely yellow hue. So I thought I'd just set the camera up and you know shoot from the hip a little bit with this bad boy. So first thing I want to do is turn this pan on to a relatively high heat. Then we're gonna we're gonna dry fry some spices. So we've got a little bit of coriander seed here. We'll throw that in. We've got a little bit of fenugreek seed. Not too much there. Just a little, a little bit. Then we've got some black cumin. I do like this stuff. You could use just normal cumin seed, but this was given to me by a friend. And the black cumin is really, really nice. And then finally, just a little sprinkling of fennel. Now every single one of these ingredients throughout the process is optional. You don't have to put them in if you don't like them. So these spices have heated up nicely. I don't want to burn them. I'm just transfer them across here into a lovely pestle and mortar. Let them cool for a second and while we do that, I'm doing this in real time from now on I guess, we're going to put the heat back up, we're going to whack a good splodge of oil in there, don't be frightened, and then there's a couple of things that are going to go in, in fact I'll turn the heat down because the pan's already hot. We're going to chuck in a couple of bay leaves, you can use uh, Asian bay leaves or normal ones. And then I've also got, in my little tub here, a bit of cassia bark, which is basically cinnamon. So we'll have a little stick of that in there too. And then what we're going to do is just get the oil to pick up the flavour of these ingredients. Just like that. Let's use this spatula to help them get under the liquid, under the oil. You can hear that it's hot. And while that's going on, over here I've got myself some garlic and some bits of ginger. So I'm going to just go ahead and chop up the garlic relatively fine. then strips and I'll turn it end on and chop it into little tiny pieces just like that do the same with this piece got some really big chunks of ginger from the Asian supermarket last week really beautiful pieces let's get it all into matchsticks and then, like I say, turn it round, and then from matchsticks to tiny, tiny little cubes. Now, if you wanted to make a garlic and ginger paste, you could just add a bit of salt over the top of this and squash it all out. But I'm not going to do that today. We're just going to throw that straight in. Now here, I've got a big onion. We're going to take a little bit of this onion and we're going to top and tail it if you like. And then I'm just going to roughly dice it. Don't have to be too fine. Let me send a little bit on the floor there. Don't be frightened. So let's turn that up full, there we go. I had the wrong one on. We'll get the onion in. Like that. 
And then here, it's got a lovely looking Scotch bonnet chilli. Shall we put him in? Yes, we will. See though, we're not frightened. Can't go for a week for the next 45 minutes. Or pick your nose. Nice. Okay, so we'll give that a bit of a stir around and let it start to soften up. Now the next thing I'm going to do is grind up the spices. Grind up the spices. Oh, that smells amazing. Would you look at that? So to this, we're going to add a couple of extra bits and bobs here. So we've got some hot madras curry powder. Let's get that in. Let's have a teaspoon of that. And we've also got our proprietary blend of mixed powder. Again, Misty Ricardo Special. Let's get a good two teaspoons of that bad boy in there. Now we've got a little bit of paprika, not smoked. And finally, we've already got chilli in there, but we're doubling up with the Kashmiri. Oh yes. There we go, a teaspoon of cashmere chilli as well. All good stuff on the day. Now, I'm just going to give this rice a little bit of a stir. Just so it doesn't stick. And we're going to turn that down just a touch. And come back over here please Clive. And then onto our onion and garlic and ginger. I'm just going to put some um, extraction on, so excuse the noise. Again, we're just having a bit of fun on a Friday night, boys and girls. Just a bit of fun on a Friday night with some uh, some beers. Beer and curry. You can follow along if you like. It's not too difficult. Should really cut this out a little bit more. Put it on that sheet. So what I'm going to do now, all those spices that we've got, I'm going to pop them in. Look at all that. What a pile of spices that is. What a pile of spices we've got there. And then we're just going to mix these spices in and it's going to get all dry in the pan. And you're going to think, oh no, what am I going to do? It's going to burn. And it would burn if you just left it like this. But the trick is, just fry your spices off a little bit, give them time, give them time, and then what we're going to do is going to take a little bit of our base gravy, again Mr. Ricardo's recipe, check his channel out, and we're just going to just quench, just quench, there we go, now look at this, now look at this, now it's cooking. That's looking a lot better, isn't it? A heck of a lot better. And we're just going to cut these spices out. We don't want to taste the spices in their raw state. They need to be cooked just like any other ingredient in this dish. So we're just going to cook them out. And if it gets a bit dry, you see how it's kind of sticking on the pan there? If it gets a little bit dry, that's no problem. Just a bit more base gravy. Look at that. Just brings it off the pan. This is an aluminium pan, by the way. I recommend aluminium pans if you're going to be cooking curries of any sort. Or you can use a karahi, which is a pressed steel pan, a little bit like a wok with no wooden handle. They work just fine. Now the next thing we're going to do 
and I'm over here out of shot a little bit. I've got some tomato concentrate, some puree. I'm just going to turn the heat down on that a minute while we do this. We don't want it to burn. I'm going to put about half a tube, give or take, of tomato puree in here. And then I'm going to top that up with twice as much water. There we go. We're just going to move that around a little bit just to get it get it mixed in. I'm just going to sit that there for a second because we're also going to add something else to it. Now this is called methy. It's dried fenugreek leaf. I'm just going to put a pinch of methy into that tomato base and that could do with a bit more water actually. There we go, just a little bit more water in there. I'm going to mix up that tomato base just so it's a nice wet mix and we're going to pop that in. I popped that in specifically over a bit that I thought was burning a touch. Don't know if you noticed that. So we've got that in. That is in. There we go. That's looking good now. We'll get that moved around. Get the heat back up. Now what we're looking for is for the whole shebang to start to homogenise, mix together and the tomato paste will cook out. We still might have a little bit in this tube we can add, look. May as well get it in, haven't we? There we go, that's that done. That is that. We'll get this mixed in. And then as soon as this all comes together into a beautiful looking kind of orangey uh, red paste, then what we're going to do is we're going to throw the chicken in on top of that. And we'll just have a quick look at this rice. Let's pan across to the rice. Oh, it's looking fine. Look at the colour. It's already picked up a bit of that colour. We're doing well. We're blasting through. About 14 minutes. Right, let's come back onto the main event. I'm dying to sneeze, you know, with all these spices in the air, but I'm trying to hold it back. Here we go. So that is uniform now. That's one colour, and you'll notice the bottom of the pan is clean. It's because this mix at the moment is wet. Well, we've got this on high heat now, and that's going to change in a minute, because we're going to drive off all this moisture, and we're going to try and get some caramelised crispy bits on the side, but before we do that, we're going to add our pre-cooked chicken because we want the chicken to soak up some of this juice before it all evaporates. Hope you're keeping up. If I'd not done this a thousand times, I wouldn't know what I was doing, and that's a fact. So we've got our base gravy over here. Um, if you have a look at the Mr. Ricardo YouTube page, you'll see how he puts it together. It's brilliant. And then you freeze it down so you can use it whenever you want. If you don't want to do the base gravy you can and freeze it, you can actually make it on the day. It's just going to put an hour and a half onto your cooking time for your curry. And if you don't cook the base for an hour and a half, you're not going to have that sweet flavour from the onions. So a lot of people say base gravy is a way of cheating. Well, yeah, of course it is. Because when you've got to cook a meal in the evening for your family, you don't want to spend an hour and a half doing a base for that meal every night. So what you do is you batch cook it, and you do enough for 10 or 15 curries, and you just freeze it down. It doesn't know it's been frozen. In fact, if anything, it breaks it down even more and makes it a better medium for using because the flavours are blended together a little bit better. So we'll just have a little bit of a liquor break here. This, by the way, is Five Points Brewing XPA. I ordered some Five Points beers and uh, I made the box up with this mixed pack of cans. I ordered specifically the Five Points Best Bitter for another video and these were the extras that I got, so cheers. that best bit of video will be coming along soon. So here we go. This is what we're looking for. You might think it's starting to stick to the pan, I want to stir it now. Just leave it. 
Just let it stick. How far do you dare go? Obviously you don't want to burn it, but we're going to add some more base gravy in a moment, so however much it looks like it's stuck to the pan, we're going to loosen it all up again with some of that base gravy, so, so let's let it go. I'm not going to touch the rest of it, but just to give you an insight, look, it's not burning on there yet, is it? Let's just put that back on there. We'll give it a few more minutes. Now this is where anybody else would cut the video, and I probably will when we add some more base gravy to quench it. I've got to do this like three or four times. So I'll just do it the once to show you what the crack is and then we'll cut to the last time when I come to dishing up because it's just basically uh, lather, rinse and repeat. Here we go look. Oh we're starting to see it stick a little bit now. But again, it's all that bad. We can go further. Let's just leave it. Let's let it cook away. You can see the heat I've got it on. Big high heat, as big as it'll go. So I've taken the opportunity, you know, while this was doing its thing, and it's only been like five minutes. I've actually gone ahead and I've started the rice again because I used the wrong store. This is the rice that I use. This is it. So get yourself a bag of that bad boy. It's good tackle, and I've just put it on over here, so I want the proper thing, you know, so that's what we've got. Now one final ingredient in here, before we sprinkle a little bit of coriander on it or whatever, this stuff is called jaggery. It's basically cane sugar in its raw form. So to sweeten the dish up, I'm going to take approximately a sugar cube, just the one sugar cubes worth of jaggery all right maybe a little bit more and i'm just going to sprinkle that in the dish and then what i'm going to do is add my next base gravy addition over the top of it and that will dilute it and this will absolutely transform this dish into something authentic that you'll recognize there's a few other things that we could do as well while we're at this stage. Well, I've got a couple of vine ripened tomatoes. So let's just pop a few of these off. They're quite big actually for vine ripened tomatoes. I'm not sure what variety they are. We'll take three of these. Okay. We're going to come over here. We're going to chop them into quarters. And then we're just going to let these little beauties melt down in the curry and just add a little note of freshness to the whole dish. Here I'm just pulling out our bay leaves because they've done their job. You don't want to end up eating one by mistake. And also here's the little bit of cassia bark that we've put in. So we'll take that out. Oh, look at that, lovely. So I'm just going to let this clip away for a minute or two. And I'm going to go and get some coriander. Frozen. And the good thing about this is, you don't even have to cut it. You put your hand in the bag, grab a chunk, and break it up over the dish and that is enough to add a little bit of fresh flavour to the whole thing. Stalks and all by the way, stalks and all. You'll find that when you're doing the base gravy there's a lot of stalks involved, a lot of coriander stalks involved and also some curry dishes have a lot of stalks in there, they'll tend to go in at the same time you put the tomato base in. Absolutely personal preference. You do what you want. The main things to take away from cooking a curry like this is if you've got any whole spices, dry fry them and then crush them in your pestle and mortar. Do it on the day, they don't keep. Secondly, if you've got any 
vegetables in there like peppers or any large pieces of onion you can also dry fry them to give them a bit of a smoky flavour and then once you've got your onions and your garlic and your ginger fried off and ready to go then add all your other dry spices and dry fry them for as long as you can and then the key is quench with a little bit of base gravy when they look like they're about to go over and that just stops them burning and then add your tomato base, add everything else, and then it's just a case of liquoring back with your base gravy and getting some really burnt on, sticky, umami bits, just like this. Oh yeah, now you're talking. Okay, the rice is done. We've got a tiny little bit of this beautiful base gravy, look. We're just going to pop that in there to loosen things up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to mix this round, you can see straight away it's already blipping away. Okay. Just put that across onto there. Okay, that's looking tremendous. So, first things first. Get this little beauty served up. So, curry style, spicy, Rogan Josh, stroke Madras mix up going into that tin. A little bit on the thick side as well. This, I could have saved a bit more of that base gravy, or even add a little bit of water you like and then finally here is the rice what do you reckon to them boys and girls what do you reckon to them they look great don't they I'm really impressed I hope you are too and I suppose the best way to eat this is, of course, with an optional dollop of yoghurt. If you've got any, I'm not going to bother. And, of course, a poppadom. Thank you very much. Oh, that's divine. Oh, she's got a kick. She's got a kick. And of course the chicken. Look away if you're a vegetarian. Sorry for horrible eating noises, but that is superb. 